So welcome everybody, welcome to the show today. We have Chantelle joining us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. You're so, so welcome. I've been so excited to have you personally on this podcast uh, because I love you. I love your story. I love everything that you stand for and everything kind of you've experienced as well um, and kind of where you are today. So before we dive right into that, do you want to just introduce yourself quickly for our listeners that maybe don't know you or don't have a clue who you are and where you're from? Sure. So my name is Chantal Rangles. I am from South Africa. I've been in the Middle East for four and a half, almost five years now. Um, I'm in the fitness industry, I'm a personal trainer, and I did coaching with you about two years ago now. Yeah, yeah, it was a while back now, definitely. <laughs> it's, it's mad because the time flies uh, so much, and it's been so cool to kind of see from where you started, from where you were now. So for anybody also that's, that's listening, I'm so, so excited for you to share a little bit more about you and in terms of what's life been like for you before we met because obviously when we met we was working in that commercial fitness space um, when we'd cross paths but we hadn't really got to know each other really directly so just give our listeners a little bit of um, a, a backstory really to who you are and how we ended up leading up to connecting. So uh, before I came to the Middle East um, my life was a bit upside down if you know what I mean um my then fiance we had split um I was having family trauma and problems going on and um I was still in the fitness industry and the dance industry back in South Africa and then I came to the Middle East which um is where I met you and um I had met you a couple times and I was really drawn to your energy however stalkerish that sounds <laughs> um now in hindsight I know why um but yeah I kind of started where I left off back in South Africa here in the in the UAE I was pushing myself mentally emotionally spiritually uh to the point where I just was ready to crack and that was the point where I hopped on a plane <laughs> went to Zanzibar for two weeks um had a huge awakening um, I didn't really know what I needed at the time, but I knew that I needed something different. And the reason I removed myself from the situation is because sometimes when you do, you get a clearer picture of what you need. Um, and then came back and on the way home from the airport, I phoned you. And I didn't know, really know what you did, <laughs> but I knew I needed some guidance and I felt like you were the person who could give me that guidance. Awesome. So yeah, I always find, like remember vividly like the first time we then met afterwards because I was like, okay, cool, tell me a bit about yourself. And you're like, well, I just kind of fled to Zanzibar to kind of just figure <laughs> some stuff out and get this space. And I can totally t relate to that. And I'm sure people listening can as well. When you just want to get away and you need to escape and just find a bit of clarity or peace of mind or something, what was it? What yeah. were you experiencing before you kind of went there? Like what, what was you experiencing? Like what was going on with you emotionally or mentally what was you experiencing so I was a bit of a workaholic I was uh I was using work to to kind of escape from what I was really needing to focus on um I was in a bit of a situation ship not relationship <laughs> so I needed to sort that out um I was having some issues at home and I didn't really know how to handle it I, I didn't have any tools if you know what I mean so um I was abusing exercise as an outlet. I was abusing alcohol as an outlet. Um, and I just felt like I was going to crack. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't see the light. And I know it's not for everybody to, to be able to get on a plane and go, go somewhere, but I'm a firm believer of removing yourself from a situation or situations um, to see a clearer, better picture. Um, I was really unhappy with the work that I was doing and I knew I needed change. I was happy where I was living. P pretty much my whole life was in, in chaos because like I said, I didn't have any tools to help me. Um, I was just escaping all the time. 
thank you so much for sharing that because again there's a lot of people listening that will will kind of be in that scenario where they feel like they're almost in an eye of a storm and and they don't really know how to navigate that and that can be really really hard at times and if you got to the point where you just felt like you was going to crack you know that yeah. that's that's quite a heavy tipping point to be so okay cool so you went to Zanzibar hopped on a plane got this clarity got some distance from your situation you come back yeah. we, we've hopped on the phone what what was what was you expecting from from our conversation I said you wanted a bit of guidance but was there anything specific you really kind of wanted to achieve um to be honest I didn't like I said I didn't exactly know what you did but my expectation from myself was that I was not in a good place I knew that there was a better way to live there was a better way to experience things to deal with things and to be because I had seen it in different people including yourself and I wanted that I wanted that peace and that clarity and that happiness because I knew where I was and what I was doing was not achieving that but I 100% knew that it was obtainable and achievable I just needed to get there and I didn't know how <laughs> nice so that's that's really interesting as well you say you didn't really know what I did like at what point did you start to figure out what I did I think when we had our first uh, when I when we had our first session and then you broke it down and it was more clear on uh, the path that we were going to take and what exactly you provided as a service and coaching wise and I was like yep I need everything I need it all <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we had that first meeting that first kind of conversation really before we even jumped into sessions and there there was immediately just this a, a strong connection definitely between us into energetically and that can sound a bit woo-woo for anybody listening but sometimes you just feel that something's right and I think it's important yeah. to follow that so whenever as people are looking for coaching or looking for guidance they need to to listen to that instinct and they need to listen to that feeling that they get and if it does feel like a good match then then to, to go with it because since then like you've done so much I mean we're very <laughs> we're really good friends now as well since the yeah. since then as well and it's been really really awesome to to kind of to kind of see so do you want to let our listeners know a little bit about what the journey looked like for you generally 100% yeah I'm so grateful that like our coaching sessions have turned into more of a friendship because I value you as a person so much I'm so grateful for being on the journey with you so when I started I think our first session I was in tears I couldn't even talk like or, or express my feelings and emotions because I was at such a bad place I was such a, a, at a dark place and throughout our sessions every single time that we had a session I felt myself getting closer and closer to the person I knew I could be and to the person I knew I was but it had been so distorted with um, things in my life that I was unable to to deal with and it felt like every session that we had together was like a stepping stone closer to being that person that I was meant to be and that authentic self that I was trying to get to but just really didn't know how to so I feel like you gave me through our sessions and through uh, the journey just more of an awareness of myself and um, more of a realization that I honestly had all the power to begin with and I'd given it away to everybody and everything around me so yeah you made it a lot clearer to me of what power I had um and you just showed me the pathway you know so yeah I think everybody needs a coach I don't care who you are and what industry you're in I just believe that everybody needs some form of guidance to get to where they need to get because we don't know everything and we don't know the exact paths to take and you know people like yourself have gone through it know a clear and direct way to get there to be okay and not to just be okay but to be happy and to have tools to just you know if, we, if something happens in our lives just to be able to cope with it um, I think it's so important. Yeah, it, I, I mean, I would echo that greatly, like regardless of like who the coach is as well, it's like the couple of key things there. One is that you 
you knew the path you just didn't know you knew the path right it's like we know (laughs) we know what we we only know what we know and sometimes that can get like you you use beautiful word there like distorted it can it can look very different when we have all these other different plates spinning in life and all of a sudden it's like okay am I supposed to be doing this am I supposed to be doing that and then we end up comparing ourselves to different situations and and we forget that actually home is inside of us and actually when we reconnect with that we can actually start to to move forward and, and have that clarity what was the point where you started to notice changes oh my goodness like the first session <laughs> the first session like I walked out and I was very emotional and I felt very exhausted because I'd let out so much <laughs> but I just knew that I was exactly where I needed to be to get to where I needed to go nice beautifully put beautifully put and because this is something that I talk about with with clients a lot and just generally is that we're always exactly where we're supposed to be so if we're struggling now or if we're thriving now it doesn't really matter it's not about like trying to escape where we are or trying to move towards something it's about knowing that actually where we are is there for our for our own greater good if you like and it it, that, that is the path when we start to listen to it yeah definitely and you know what like growing up I really struggled as a teenager to to fit in and stuff and I wish that I had had you in my life back then just to tell me that I was all I needed like everything on the outside didn't really matter like you really did make it clear that even though you were showing me what to do and how to do it that coming back to myself was the greatest tool I had yeah definitely and it's one of those things that we take for granted so often I know I did for sure in the past as well and it's something and I still do sometimes I have to remind myself actually do you know what (laughs) hang on I do have everything I need still (laughs) and but that's normal and that's natural and like you said it's like you kept coming back to almost your own solutions yeah I'd kind of show, show you the way but essentially I would never tell you what to do or how to do it specifically I get you to go through a specific thought process or through a specific exercise that would reveal things Um, yeah and you were doing the revealing if you like and that's what I loved about about your coaching is you never ever said you have to do this you have to do that you asked me questions and then I answered them myself you know what I mean like 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 as if I I did know (laughs) what I already knew (laughs) so I really like that like you didn't force me into directions that I didn't want to go into or directions that I felt were not for me you you literally just showed me a different way of being that was more in line with my authentic self so I really enjoyed that part of it I love that because it's it's so powerful when you when you have that realization that okay you you have to have the answers but when you experience that repeatedly there's this sense of trust that builds with yourself and this rapport and this relationship and a lot of people talk about like self-love for example in the way of okay we'll go and take a soak in the path go through a walk meditate that's self-love I I believe and I'd be curious to know what your kind of thoughts are on this in terms of self-love is is it for me it's about building that trust and that sense of deep knowing that no matter where you are you've always got your own back (laughs) like I think that's like ultimate self-love yes I think above above all the other things that you said, trust in yourself and knowing that you know what is good for you and what is really going on inside you is the most important thing that you can become aware of. Yeah, definitely. And you you touched upon that earlier when you said about awareness. I think that really is the the beginning because without that level of self-awareness to know, hang on, something's not quite right here or something's amazing here. If you're unaware of it, then you're almost not leading your own ship. You're not, you know, the driver of your own life. And I think that's where, again, that, that sense of empowerment really comes from. Yeah. And the thing is like, I gave away my power on a silver platter to everybody around me and The fact that I finally realized through your coaching that, you know, that power belongs to nobody else but me. Like, that is mine. That's such a sacred gift um, that we, we, I don't know, like abuse. 
from time to time and yeah it's just it's such a good awakening it's such a good realization when you realize that actually you are in control yeah definitely because that's that's the one thing with with stress anxiety overwhelm is that that feeling that we're sort of keeping our head above water when we're trying to swim and, and that we're not in control and any moment something's just going to come and take things away or we we don't feel safe usually is, is a kind of a, a key route there but the idea of having control not in a unresourceful way like you have to have everything in its place but the, just the knowing that actually you're the one that could influence your own life in any way you choose is so so powerful isn't it oh it's beautiful really <laughs> <laughs> it is it is it's, it's a gem it's a gem and you know like i'm so grateful for it because hadn't i gone on the coaching um i think i'd be in the same spot that that you found me where i was just a wreck so yeah forever grateful <laughs> <laughs> right back at you right back at you that's the thing Co coaching is, is kind of a two-way street in in many ways because a good coach will always be learning as well from the experience of others because the things that i've been working through with, with you are things that then help me in coaching sessions with other people that help me to reflect on my own understandings of things as well and it's something that again those kind of two heads are better than one mentality and when those energies come together you create like these like one big super collective mind and I don't want to go off tangent here because I know we could easily do that <laughs> um, but it, now the rabbit hole we go <laughs> exactly exactly but I think so, some of those um simple lessons of two people coming together three people four people it doesn't matter it could be a form of group coaching it could be somebody talking to their best friend but whenever you start to express and you start to ask better questions and we start to raise awareness the 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 response or the consequence of that is just so profound that it leads to to just places that you can't even imagine 100 percent. that being said like for you because i know we easily go down a rabbit hole and this might be part of <laughs> what we're about to talk about um but what was your favorite part of the coaching and why um my favorite part oh I can't exactly say all all of it all of it <laughs> all of it was <laughs> um but like our energy work and and becoming aware of my energy my breath um and like I said before just just the, the knowledge and awareness of knowing that um, I could do everything for me, that once showing the direction and the road to take, that I was, I was finding out things about myself that I, I didn't even know. So I think it was the, the awakening and the knowledge and awareness that um, everything I needed was not external, that everything that I needed was internal. and really getting to know myself on a deeper level just it, it was beautiful I, I think it, um, the coaching has been one of the most amazing relationships that I've ever had in in my life and that's my relationship with myself absolutely definitely can you give us an example of some of the things that you sort of found out about yourself along the way yeah, so so I, I found out that some of the limiting beliefs that I was carrying wasn't mine to carry anyway. It was uh, generational, it was from my parents. And I love my parents, but uh, you know, they, they were doing as much as they could, knowing what they could. And just the realization that that was theirs and not mine, that I could separate what I wanted to believe in what I wanted to take forward um, was huge. I love that because it, that just to touch on that, if anybody's never really kind of heard of that idea is that essentially throughout our lives, we model the people that are around us, right? We model our parents, we model our friends, our family, our teachers, whoever was around you in those earlier years, usually up until around the age of seven are the key ones that we end up modeling. And when we do that, we're like sponges. We're just, we're just these, this little ball of energy really at that time, just soak it in everything around us. So when we then get to adulthood, we 
have these patterns and habits and thoughts and emotions and behaviors and we think that we almost just 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 have them that's who we are but actually we've inherited a lot of that stuff and there comes a time when sometimes those things don't serve you anymore right and that's the point in which that awareness can help you change because you get to clear the slate you get to actually have a blank canvas and then create actually what do you want when did you choose to believe those things because when you start to choose something new that is aligned with you that is going to be of service to you again you start to live your own life rather than somebody else's 100% and I think another huge one was being able to make space for forgiveness for myself for the things that I chose for the coping mechanisms that I used because I didn't know any better because I didn't have the tools to choose better or make better decisions so forgiving myself and the things that I went through and did and chose was groundbreaking what did that do for you emotionally having that that layer of forgiveness and the ability to then actually truly forgive it made me feel like I'd been carrying this heavy burden around and I could finally set it down I could finally put it on the floor and say you did me well when I needed it when I didn't know any better but I do know better now and I could almost just offload what I'd been carrying that again you you shouldn't be so hard on yourself for for the things that you chose or the things that happened to you because you weren't in a place of resource and I literally I actually remember it was one of uh, after one of our sessions I had a visual picture of me taking off a backpack and walking into the sunset like a completely just releasing something that had burned in me for such a long time that I'd actually forgot about and the realization was such a heavy sorrow for me to actually say you know what you did the best you could in that time um I don't have to carry you anymore I don't have to hold on to you it's done and I forgive myself it's so interesting that you said there that you thought you'd forgotten about that that burden that experience and and the the emotion that went with it because that's kind of how stress emotion and trauma really works if we don't deal with it at the time in the best way that we that we that we know all right if we don't do what we really need to do energetically to let it go it adds up over time and it just almost lays in weight and I don't want that to sort of sound scary for anybody but that's how energy works right because our emotions are there for us to learn Right, they're there, for, there for us to learn something about our situation. It could be that holding on to certain emotion protects you in certain incidents, and that's okay. That's very healthy. But there comes a yeah. time when these feelings might show up, and actually, they might be those feelings from a long time ago because now your beautiful being has decided you don't you don't need it anymore. You're good without that stuff. And when that happens, like you used the word like groundbreaking earlier, it it just lifts like this this fog and this weight that you've been carrying. I love that that visualization that you said of you just dropping this backpack and walking off into the sunset I think that's awesome yeah it was it was literally like that and I 100% believe that I I feel like I was stacking and layering all these events in my life because I didn't know what else to do with them and it it reached a point when I got onto uh, the plane to go to Zanzibar that it was going to topple over and I think at one point in Zanzibar it did because it kind of all hit me But I think that's very important. I think reaching rock bottom and reaching that point of no return is your day one. Yeah. Is the first day you know that you actually can't carry on doing what you're doing because it's it's not living. And I don't think I, I had been living for a long time. I was just existing. And I knew that there was a better way. I really did. I knew internally that there was a better way. I just didn't know how to get there. So, yeah. Would you go back in time now in hindsight and allow yourself to get to that point of like rock bottom or would you rather have intervened earlier? No, 100%. I feel like we all have to get to that stage. And I know it sounds weird, but I think... We have to break in order to rebuild. I think there has to be 
pain in order to walk through that pain and for that pain to make you stronger. And I know a lot of us avoid that pain. That's why we use distractions all the time because we don't really want to face, you know, what's going on internally in our minds and in our hearts. So I 100% would not change a single thing. I needed to go through that. I needed to feel my lowest low so that now I can feel my highest high, that I can actually know that I've broken through, that I've walked on a journey and that I know myself better. Like I wouldn't give that up for the world. I love it. Listen, Chantel, like we, we finished coaching like a couple of years ago, really now, like, cause we, yeah. we, we coached a while back. So, but you always coach me, let's be honest. Yeah. Like and, and that, that's, that's natural and that's normal. And, and it's interesting yeah. you say that as well is because a lot of people almost like sell a dream. It's like, everything's always going to be perfect, but actually oh, no. there, there, there's another, there's another level to everything, isn't there? Like, okay, you learn one thing and then it's all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, I didn't know this now either. And now I'm in this situation or I, I'm experiencing this. What's that about? Because you unlock these different things and it's not always, is necessarily negative and is far from kind of rock bottom kind of space but coaching is a lifetime thing right not necessarily coaching sessions but having the the space and having the the peer group that you can turn to is really really powerful and something really important for longevity and lasting change i think 100 percent yeah so obviously uh, kind of officially then we obviously haven't been coaching for for a long time um so what What's that done for you in those periods of time where you've not been having coaching sessions per se? How, yeah. is, how have those past sessions helped you in life since then? Well, I feel now with the coaching that I've had that when something happens, I now have tools that I can fall back on that I know can help me get through um, situations. Like, you know, I, I lost my dad recently and um, many of us are losing family members and, and you know, loved ones in this COVID time that we, we can't get home to. And although it hit me really hard, I was way more equipped to deal with my dad passing than when my mom passed. And when my mom passed, I totally broke down. And knowing what I know now and having the tools that I have now, I could completely look at it and deal with it in a much resourceful for way than I would have hadn't I gone through the coaching. And that's with like day-to-day life as well. You know, um, if my finances aren't going well or if something happens in my relationships or in uh, my family or wh- whatever, I just feel like I can get through it. I can cope with it. And everything doesn't seem like doom and gloom anymore. <laughs> you know, okay, it's a problem. It's going to sort itself out. Um, or I'm going to be able to deal with it uh, a lot more efficiently than, than I was. So it doesn't feel like life is disturbing me as much. I feel like it's more flowing through me. Um, even the hard things, you know. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that as well. Because that's, that's not easy as well, especially what you've been going through recently. And I think yeah. that it's so powerful to hear you say that in a time like this. So, so as of recording, we are still in the pandemic and, the, you know, the, the world is doing what the world is doing. And, yeah. the, you know, stress and anxiety, um, overwhelm, depression. There's so there's such a rise in in all of those things and now is the time that we need the most to learn these tools and to be able to navigate ourselves within this world rather than continually trying to navigate the world outside of us we need to be navigating the world Mm -hmm. inside of us um you know we can go down a rabbit hole if they're one and the same or not but we won't do that on this episode (laughs) at at the end of the day we need to start paying attention to to those feelings because they're just signals they're just cues for us to wake up pay attention and then do something with those feelings it doesn't mean we have to not feel them anymore it's okay to still have certain fears in life but it's not okay to be limited by them is it no not at all and that's the thing um not being a not being drowned by them or not being um, led astray when something happens like that and turning to things that distract us um having the things that I have now internally where I can just go out and meditate 
if I'm having a stressful day or I can journal in the morning just to set my day up or you put me onto some really good books, <laughs> some really good literature, which I, I absolutely adore. Um, and that have taken me even deeper into finding out more about myself and that. So, yeah, I think it's crucial at this point in time. So all that being said, what does life look like for you now? Um, obviously, I have my ups and downs and stuff like that. But like I said, it, become, it comes from a place of more resourcefulness. Um, and I feel like when you go through a bit of awakening and you go through a bit of coaching and stuff like that, something bites you, something gets your attention that you want to help more people feel the way you feel now, knowing that they don't have to live like that and be like I was, like completely stressed out and have anxiety and depression and not know um, where to go or what to do. Um, I think there's a calling when something like that happens, when you have an awakening like that, to help other people to go through the same thing. So that is that is my one, that is my, my mission at the moment, to just help as many people as I can to feel lighter and um, feel more themselves and feel like they're living and not just existing. Beautiful, beautiful. Like that, that just lights me up when I hear you say things like that, because like, <laughs> I, we've talked before about like the ripple effect and how, you know, us having a conversation now and people listening to it, somebody might make the smallest change that could change their life. And then they'll teach that to somebody else. And that ripple effect just continues to grow. And, and that idea of something just kind of bites you and you just want to give more and, and help other people realize things. And you'll do that in your own unique way as other people do. And I think that really hits home for me because one of the things here, wellness theory, especially that we're leaning even more into now is bringing our awareness to, to what's possible when we actually do start to let go of the, these old burdens, these, these unhealthy stress or unresolved emotions and these limiting ideas that we, we find ourselves living in. When yeah. we let go of those things, we see much more around us we start to see how we can help how we can influence because we're not consumed by ourselves anymore yeah we still take care of ourselves but it unlocks this new picture and this new capacity to be able to actually hold space for other people and that could be in so many different ways and one of the things we're leaning into more and more here is about aligning with the, the global goals right and about how okay yeah. as, as as a planet what do we need to be doing as humanity right now what needs our attention and one of those goals goal number three is actually about good health and well-being and making sure that everybody has access to good health and well-being and i know that's something you're super passionate about aren't you in, in terms of yeah. what you do how you help people and you're just leaning into that so much it's such a beautiful thing to see because that was the last thing on your mind really like when we first met to where you are 100 yeah yeah and that's what's what's led me to completely transform the way I coach you know to not just give people an eating program or a fitness program I want to know why yeah. why my clients are acting like they're acting or oh, what habits can we can we change you know so it's made me go deeper into my coaching um and deeper just into the people that I spend my time with and my family I speak to and stuff um you know I don't want to force a pull down anybody anyone's throats but I do want to plant seeds that that will in in time you know start to start to grow so Absolutely. And I have no doubt that you're seeing that in your clients' results as well. 100%. 100%. Amazing. Beautiful. So one thing um, that obviously I see that you you do often as well um, is you sometimes post like videos on your page that people find really, really inspiring. Obviously, you're posting what you do and your thoughts and your own journey. So if anybody does want to come and follow you and talk to you and connect with you, uh, where, where can they come and find you? You can find me on uh, Facebook or um, Instagram, relentless underscore Sean on Instagram and just Chantal Randall's on Facebook. And um, it's funny you talk about the videos because I feel like my videos are all, of, all about what I mis was mistaken with as a, as a kid and as a teenager and as a young adult and what I was told. And this is the miseducation of Chantal Randall's, like what I was miseducated on. And now I finally feel like I have the right education so um, yeah, just my experiences, you know, if people can learn through 
what I've done wrong, the mistakes I've made and the realizations I have on certain topics. And if it helps just one person, then I am so grateful. Yeah, and you absolutely are doing that as well. So we are all super grateful for you. Definitely. Oh, thank you. So before you go, um, let me ask you this. Like if you had somebody that was like wanting to maybe pick up the phone and start thinking about coaching or even reach out to you as well, like you've said on those social media platforms, what would you say to somebody that's just really thinking about taking action when it comes to their own personal growth? I would say that the best investment that you'll ever make in your life is on yourself and your mental well-being because it will ripple out into your whole life. It will ripple out into your finances, into your relationships. If you don't take care of you mentally and emotionally and spiritually, like uh, I just don't feel like you'll get to your full potential and where you really need to and ought to or to be and that might be completely uh, off track of where you are now but yeah it was it was my greatest investment and I'm so grateful for it because I'm in such a better space now so if people out there are hesitating to to take the leap just know that you will you will not regret it ever I love it I love it one more question before we wrap this up yeah you've got the microphone got people listening to you that may be stressed anxious overwhelmed from all different walks of life what would you want to say to them there is a better way there is a much better way of living and there's certain people out there who know the way who know the how so if you need somebody like that get in touch with coaches get in touch with with charlotte get in touch with somebody because i promise you now there is a way out i at one point thought i was in a black hole and i was never going to get out and there is light i promise you now there is light at the end of the tunnel and it's never too late you can completely transform your life beautiful i love that so so powerful uh, on that note i just want to thank you so much for obviously taking the time to come and have this conversation with us um and i think you're you've you proved day in day out but also now just in the, this conversation that you are that light you're shining that for other people and i think that's something you just need to keep doing <laughs> just keep keep <laughs> keep doing you because it's re- it's really inspiring and i appreciate you not only as a client but as a friend as well and i think anybody listening to this will be really inspired by you and what you have to say in your journey as well thank you so much i mean so much to me